Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. And one of the, my favorite things I like to do is connect with people. And through this podcast, I've had the opportunity to meet someone that I might never have met otherwise. And I'm so excited to introduce you today to Nikki Bruno. And I would love to sit down and have a glass of wine with her, but we can't do that right now. So we're going to pretend we're doing that and have a chat and everyone else can listen in on this because one day she and I will sit down together or do something together and actually sip a real glass of wine. So without further ado, let me tell you a little bit about her. Nikki is uh, a woman who has made it her mission to help other women going through either a divorce or another time of adversity. She has degrees from Princeton and Harvard, which means she is way smarter than me. And she has created and is the founder of a coaching program called The Epic Comeback and is also the host of a podcast called The Epic Comeback as well. Nikki is a proud single mama of two, world traveler, singer, and scuba diver. And in 2019, after a generation in Boston, she embraced a new chapter and moved to Los Angeles. So she is not afraid to make big, bold moves. Welcome, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. I'm so happy to be here. And, you know, if it weren't nine in the morning, maybe I would have a glass of wine next to me. <laughs> yeah. Right here in Los Angeles, it's, you know, it's uh, on the early side in the morning. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. No problem. Well, a cup of coffee. One day we'll, we'll, we'll do it in person. So you, you are a life coach and I want to talk about that a little bit because that term is used a lot and a lot of people don't know what that actually is and what life coaches do. So can you first explain what a life coach is? Absolutely. So a life coach and Calling myself a life coach, I feel like there isn't really anything that fully explains what I do. I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a category of life coach called an empowerment coach. At least that's how I define myself. But yes, a life coach is a type of professional coach. Most people have heard of coaching, either executive and leadership coaching or life coaching. And what a professional coach does, it's very simple, not easy, but simple, is to help people to move from point A to point B and to be expert in motivation and creating a vision around what point B is going to look like and to kind of break that vision down into goals. So what a coach does is to help his or her clients to reach goals. So to define what does point A look like? Where am I right now? Let's take stock of where I am right now. The good, the bad, the ugly, what are my strengths? What do I have kind of, what obstacles do I have that have shown up either external or internal that are getting in the way of me being where I, in my gut, I have a burning desire to go. And then also to explore point B, as I mentioned, to create that vision, that really compelling vision around where you want to be in your life, in your career, in your social life. In, there's this tool that coaches use called the wheel of life, and it kind of divides the areas of your life into social and spiritual and professional and personal and intimate relationships, et cetera. And so that really is the simplified version of what a coach does. A coach is about action. And often coaches are kind of compared against therapists to, mm -hmm. in order to explain what each kind of um, per person who's in a service profession does. Therapy, and this is a generalization, is more about emotion, is more about regulating emotions, more about treating and helping people with mental health conditions, disorders, talking about very often talking about the origins of our be of our patterns, our behavior, and certainly and our feelings, and helping people to be thriving from an emotional and psychological point of view. And coaches are much more about action. 
So not so much why am I in a certain pattern or why, why am I feeling the way I feel? It's more about, okay, we don't really care about why. Not that that isn't important. That's something kind of to explore more with your therapist. What we care is what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about where you want to be versus where you are now? So coaching is very much about champ as a coach, I champion my clients. I believe in them 4,000% and I help them to plan for the future and to then in to implement that plan and also to troubleshoot while implementing the plan because there are always things that come up, right? 2020 is filled with things that have mm -hmm. come up, both external and internal obstacles. And my clients are like, can I get a break? Like, how am I right. supposed to move toward certain types of goals when I'm not allowed to go outside and hang out with friends and go to the library and, and do all, all kinds of things that we're just simply in quarantine not allowed to do? So that's a bit of a long answer to your question, but really that's, that's coaching. Coaching is your coach is going to light a fire under your butt mm. and is going to hold you accountable to what you say your goals are. And your, the name of your program is called the Epic Comeback. So what does an Epic Comeback look like and who is that for? An Epic Comeback. So first of all, the phrase is open to interpretation. So I do not have two clients who experience the same epic comeback and it doesn't just have one definition, but I have definitely my own personal definitions and interpretations of what an epic comeback is. I went through the original epic comeback. I was my own guinea pig. I went through a three year long high conflict divorce that nearly broke me emotionally, very difficult financially, socially. I mean, and, and you, you know this all too well, Renee, with your clients, that a, a high conflict divorce, it is a traumatic situation. There is no area or aspect of your life that it does not impact and often impact negatively. And so my epic comeback was about living a better life after trauma rather than a worse one. My epic comeback was about coming back to getting my mojo back because I... I've led an awesome life. I, I'm a high achiever. I'm, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate to, to lead a really blessed life and to have that charisma and to have that mojo and to, and to have feelings of success. And when I got, when I was going through my divorce, I lost my mojo. I was on the floor. Mm. My self-esteem was in the crapper. And I just, I was, I was deflated. I was depressed. I was in just not a, not a pretty state, understandably so. So for me, my, the epic comeback was about, like I said, getting that mojo back and taking some epic steps in my life that would capitalize on what I had gone through because there were many, many lessons that I learned. I am probably a thousand percent wiser and a thousand percent stronger because of the trauma and the difficulty that I went through. And so an epic comeback is one where you take what you've gone through. You take that, that, that version of hell that you've gone through, whether it's divorce, whether it's cancer, whether it's an infertility journey, some kind of life shattering experience that really kind of keeps you in a place of survival mode for, I usually say like one to three years or even more. And you take what you've learned and you use and how you, how much stronger you've become, really you come, you become a warrior when you go through right. a very difficult experience. And if you're open to that, and if you are able to achieve the mindset that allows you to find what I call the treasure in trauma and to come back even stronger than you've ever been. And the other thing I would say about an epic comeback is that an epic comeback for me, and I would say for almost all of my clients, one of the themes is freedom. An epic comeback is about becoming autonomous and free and liberated and being in a position where you are the architect of your own life. You're the one who's in charge. And that was definitely true for me. And my clients are saying, I want to feel free. I want to live according to the truth of, of who I am. So that's what an epic comeback is. And who is it for? It's for anyone who wants one. I have clients who haven't recently gone through trauma, but who are so attracted to the concept of staging an epic comeback that for them, it kind of 
it, it more looks like an up leveling. It's not so much I've been in hell and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna be on top. It's more like I'm I'm already living a pretty awesome life, mm. but there's something more. There's something new that I want to achieve, or there's just there's there's that feeling of something more. And so I have some fantastic kick butt clients who are not coming off of divorce or cancer or something very obviously traumatic, but who are, who are getting to that kind of what for them is a higher or deeper or more meaningful level. I love that thought of sort of shaking things up, even if you're not in a place of you're not on the bathroom floor crying, but you're just kind of in a status quo, just like shaking yourself alive and saying, what more can I, can I do or achieve or be? That's, that's awesome. But how do you start? So if you do have someone who has gone through something so traumatic, whether it's a divorce or uh, an illness, and the goal is to get to that place of freedom that you talk about, there's a huge span of, I imagine, time and work from one end to the other. So how, how do you start? What's the first thing someone can do to far, start staging their epic comeback? Well, I have an, a pathway that I've created. It is really the intellectual property of my, of my business, not only my coaching program, but also the Epic Comeback podcast, et cetera. And the way that I created it was I geeked out. I was, I was taught to study things in order, to, in order to, to help understand them and move ahead. And so I studied hundreds and continue to study hundreds of real life comebacks not only individual comebacks and spiritual and personal ones, but also I've studied corp corporate comebacks. I've studied organizational comebacks. I've studied athletic comebacks big time. And what I've asked myself while I was doing these studies was number one, what are the human qualities that it takes to stage an epic comeback? What makes a comeback? What do we need inside of us in order to, to do that? And then number two, my second question was, what, what, is, what are the paths that people are taking? What are the actions that they're taking to move through, as, as you say, Renee, to move through um, a process that often involves a good deal of time and work and energy? Although I should say, we, sh we should never assume that an epic comeback is going to take forever, especially if we're mm. working with a coach and or a therapist. It's an amazing combination to work with both. So when I answer your question, I really am referring to the epic comeback journey, which is my methodology. This is what I do with my clients. And um, it's a generalization. It's a, it's a model that is based on case studies, as well as on my training and education as a professional coach, as well as all the rest of my fancy education, as well as my <laughs> own personal experience my own personal experience, because as I said, I was my, I was my own guinea pig in, in creating this experience. So to start, often my clients, they're not ready to start working with me until they feel ready to take some action. So when you've gone through a, when you're going through or have gone through a traumatic experience, there's often a period of healing that could take anywhere from a, a few months to maybe even a few years. I mean, I have some clients who maybe have gone through a really high conflict divorce or who went through cancer or some kind of other long-term illness who are working with their therapists, their healing, their, what, what I call my period of healing is I took about nine months after I separated from my then husband to basically heal and suck my thumb <laughs> and, and live a very normal, like boring life. I wasn't thinking epic. I was thinking, I want to have, like, I want to have like several months of a life that is as boring and normal and mundane as possible. And so really the start of an epic comeback comes with a turning point, some kind of turning point where something happens or you look in the mirror. For me, I looked in the mirror and I just said to myself, Nikki, I said, Bruno, actually, my last name. I said, Bruno, this isn't funny anymore. Hmm. I am not going to be a victim anymore. I was an adult when I got, <clears throat> when I got married. I was an adult when I had children. I'm an, I was an adult when I filed for divorce. And now it's go time. Now it's time for me to get this, to get my mojo back. So some kind of turning point that tells you internally, and you might not even know that, it hap that it's happening when it's happening, but that tells you internally that it's time to make a change and that, You've been in a certain place, 
and you are going to a new place and you're ready to start taking action. And that's when, that's when my clients reach out to me generally. And it, it could be while the, it, you know, it could be while the, let's say the divorce or the illness is still happening. It just, it just depends on where you are, where you are in your healing process or your grief process. And then after the turning point, the first thing that my clients and I do is what is a phase that I call reckoning. And it's really an assessment. It's sitting down with yourself and getting quiet and telling the absolute and total truth of where you are. The absolute truth of where you are. Like I said before, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. That is, it's like, it's like you're doing an audit on yourself. Like, okay, what has happened? I'm going to stack up even the statistics of what happened. Like in my, in my, in my case, it was like, um, I've lost my life partner. I've lost my husband. I've lost half of my time with my children. I've lost probably 75% of a household income. I've lost a few friends and just kind of lining all that up and saying, here's where I am. But the key to this process is not to leave out the good stuff because it's the good stuff that motivates you and is your foundation as you move forward in your epic comeback. And so not only being super honest about what you, what you kind of have stacked against you and what you've lost and what you've gone through and the pain, but also what are my superpowers? What have been my badass moments in the past? Um, what, what are the, the strengths that I can use to propel myself into a much better future? Um, so not only kind of what stacked against you, but also what are my assets? What have I learned? That's the biggest, biggest question, right? In this, in this phase mm -hmm. is to also be very honest about, this is what I've learned. This is what I can take responsibility for. This was my part in the crisis or the trauma, et cetera. And how can I then move from a place of perhaps blame and anger and frustration to a place of responsibility, to a place of, okay, just like I said when I looked in the mirror, I'm an adult and it's up to me to reclaim what I have and to move ahead, take responsibility for moving ahead, even though some crappy things happened to me that I didn't have control over. And I think what's so important about what you said, all of that, is the piece of owning your own shit in all of it. Because we don't want to move on to the next relationship and make the same mistakes. You know, we have that term, someone has baggage. Well, it's kind of like the the baggage will carry on unless you unpack it and learn about what it is so that you can release it and recognize it. So that's, that's such important uh, information. So my question for you is you had said that you had studied hundreds, if not more of epic comebacks. What is one of your favorite stories? Ooh, I love that question. I love that question. <laughs> so I kind of have two answers. One of them is, one of them is, is my own client and one of them is, um, I'll, I'll talk about my own client. So, so I have a client who she was on top of her industry, on top of her field in New York City, moving and shaking and working alongside some, some quite famous people. And she and her family went on vacation in a Caribbean, on, on a Caribbean island and she was bitten by a mosquito that transferred some kind of form of, I think it was, it, it was some form of hepatitis, I think. But the point is that it was, it was, um, it was a, t a disease that attacked her immune system and she was laid on her back for literally three years. She was in bed on her back with zero energy for three years. And she was leading a jet setting like I said, kind of high powered professional life, very busy person. And she's also someone who's, I mean, she's got to be a genius. She's extraordinarily intelligent and really, really active mind. And when we started working together, she was starting to feel stronger and she was able to go to a yoga class and participate in, you know, participate at least in a yoga class. And she had been spending some of her time studying a Japanese form of healing and keep in mind that she has a son. And during this time 
when she was laid on her back for three years, her son, I think, I think he was eight when, when she was bitten by this mosquito. And so her question that we were exploring in a coaching relationship was, how do I integrate who I was before mm. and this high powered life that I'm now physically unable to lead because she will probably always have some physical and energetic limitations um, from the disease that she had contracted. How do I integrate that person with the person who I am now? And I feel like this empty vessel. I I feel like I've been in hibernation for three years. And so her comeback involved getting to know herself as really a new version of herself and making some plans. I mean, she, she had spent years not even having the energy to make plans. Imagine that. Wow. And so it was just her, her comeback has been such a beautiful process to witness because she made so many meaningful decisions about wanting to live her life in, at a slower pace and in a more kind of intentional and mindful way that was actually, it's interesting, because a lot of people think of an epic comeback probably as something where you become more high powered or maybe you mm. become busy or maybe you're out there and you've started a new business. And this is true of some of my clients, started a new business or you know, wanting to publish some books or just like some kind of new project that you really want to sink your teeth into. And for her, the epic moves that she was making were kind of more internal and about sort of recreating, reshaping her identity. Wow. And how is she doing now? Oh, she's doing really well. She, she decided to move her family back geographically to a place that all of them consider to be much more home than where they were before. Mm. And she is finding ways to, to practice this Japanese form of healing. And she's, yeah, um, that, she's, she's doing well. That's fascinating. Okay, so we're going to shift the conversation a little bit, and you have a new project that I am obsessed with the name of it, but it is called FU 2020, and I feel like like that's what we've all been saying all year long, like FU. <laughs> so can you tell me about that, what it is, and what inspired it? What inspired FU 2020 is being a woman and being a mother and being a business business owner and really being a human being during this apocalyptic, unprecedented, am I allowed to swear? I mean, bastard of a year. <laughs> <Where is that? laughs> yeah. So, so FU 2020 is a collaboration of me and two of my absolutely incredible colleagues. One of them, her name is um, Andrea Domian, and she is a, a portrait photographer in Orange County in California. And the, my other collaborator is Caitlin James, who is a fashion stylist and also a closet or organizer. She, she styles people, and she's all about fashion and wardrobe. And the three of us met a few months ago, and we just, we just there was a chemistry there, and we knew we wanted to collaborate. And I think it was just one of those things where it was just the chemistry. And I was like, what if we had a program where women who have been absolutely bashed and battered by 2020, by COVID, by quarantine, by unemployment, by, um, I mean, all the things that have happened, by Racist violence has been, you know, racism and, and un racial unrest has been happening this year and really polarized politics. And out here in, in Southern and Northern, all over California, we have fires blazing right now. And so we're all, like people are having to evacuate their homes. It really feels so much like the apocalypse. And moms especially who have had to go months without childcare and yet still somehow work full-time jobs or run one or more businesses. And now with remote schooling and, and schools have opened all, well, not the buildings, but at least school has begun all across the country. And you've got parents, um, and in particular, uh, disproportionately moms who are having to choose between paying their rent and helping their kindergartner learn how to read. It's just, it is a completely unsustainable, completely impossible 
paradox of a terrible situation. Now, I'm not saying that there, you know, that there haven't been positive things that have come out of this year for individuals and maybe even eventually we'll find out for the world. But, but the women around me and the women who, with whom I'm in community are kick butt, professional, amazing, mostly moms here in Los Angeles and around and all over the country. I mean, I, I network with people all over, all over the country and they're pissed. They're mad. They're reaching their, we are reaching our breaking points multiple times often every day. Like, and literally on the floor, how do I do this with one of my children, a whole, you know, staging a tantrum in one room during remote schooling, you know, and just the amount of domestic violence and abuse right. and all of that. So FU 2020 is a way for women. It is an empowerment and self-care experience and a way for women to transform their anger and their frustration and their pain and their trauma because by the way, there are also women who are going through divorce and illness and loss and all the things that my clients go through on any given year. And everything's you know, heaped on top of, especially women who are taking care of their children as well as their elders, many of whom are, are unhealthy or very sick or dying in hospitals alone because no one can visit them because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, FU 2020 is an empowering experience, an empowerment experience that culminates in a photo shoot at, um, at Andrea's portrait studio in Orange County. And it involves empowerment coaching with me, fashion styling with Caitlin, and an inc incredible VIP photographic portrait session with Andrea, with all three of us in her studio. And what you come away with is you come away with three beautiful, beautiful portraits of you, the client, as a statement to 2020 that 2020 did not break you. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually love the concept of anyone who's even going through a divorce to have photos taken where they mm -hmm. feel really good and, you know, get a little pampered, have your hair done, have your makeup done. And just so you, for you, so you can look at them and say, you know what, I survived this and this is not the end. And I look damn good. Like, I love yes. that idea. Oh, it's so, yeah. it's awesome. Yes, it's delightful. It's almost like a form of, and this may not sound healthy, but it is, it's almost like a form of revenge against this really painful experience that you've had. I mean, especially if you're, if you didn't initiate the divorce and you feel rejected and you feel, you feel not beautiful and not sexy. And so, yes, definitely. I think that um, divorce photography is, is, is the next big thing. And I would even venture to say, what I, if I were a photographer, what I would be doing right now, and I do this in my own way with my clients, but what I would be doing right now is I would be, I would be um, enhancing a category that I looked up the other day called trauma-informed photography, like having a trauma-informed experience. Because when you've gone through something really, really hard and traumatic, it can be very empowering and very healing to even have photographs taken. And the three of us who are collaborating on this project, we all are, each of us is known for being very compassionate and very kind and really helping women to feel loved and beautiful and powerful. And that is, that's what's in the essence of my, of my coaching and what makes me a good coach. It's not Ivy League degrees. It's not, I mean, what makes me a good coach is that I believe my role rock solid faith that every single person on this planet is worthy and beautiful and talented and powerful. Mm -hmm. And that is what I, that is the belief that I very effectively transfer to my clients. Oh, amen to that. So Nikki, how do we find you? Where does someone go to connect with you and how do they work with you? The best way to find me is on my website, which is the epic comeback com, And there's a link to the podcast as well, to the Epic Comeback podcast. And I have now, I think now I'm on episode something like 150-ish. And it's a short podcast. It's maybe 15 to 20 minutes each. We go over sometimes, but it's a short podcast. And every guest on my podcast is someone who has come back from one or more forms of trauma. So anyway, the portal is theepiccomeback.com and the way to work with me 
is um, I am, I'm an empowerment coach. I have, my business is very simple. I have one coaching program. It's called the Epic Comeback. And I work with my clients one-on-one -on -one for periods of time of three months or six months, or I even have a couple of clients who sign on to work with me for a year. And that involves weekly coaching sessions as well as all kinds of check-ins and communication in between. I really am, I'm your partner. And you do not need to be living in LA to work with you. You do this virtually. Exactly. I do this virtually. Even my clients who are in California or Southern California, I meet with them virtually. I, if they're in California, we go out of our way to make sure we meet in person at least once. But my business is global. I have a client in Hong Kong. I, my clients are all over. Um, I mean, most of them are in the United States, but all over the U.S. And so we meet over video conference or phone, whatever my clients, uh, whatever my clients' pleasure is. Thank you so much, Nikki, for being here and for sharing your work and your mission and your inspiring words with uh, my listeners. So thank you so much. Thank you, Renee. It's my pleasure. Pleasure, very much so.